Welcome to Encounter the Word. We at the Jesuit Institute offer this reflection every Sunday on the Liturgy of the Word, where we try to make sure that our reflection on God's Word helps us live God's Word in our daily lives. And so, let's pray together. Lord God, we give you thanks that we can gather as a community to reflect upon your word and how your word invites us to respond at this moment in our lives and the life of our community and our society. Help us through our listening to deepen our ability to hear what you want of us so that we might live this word in practical ways in the days that are to come. We ask this in the name of Jesus the Lord. Amen. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place, and suddenly a sound came from heaven, like the rush of a mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared to them tongues as of fire, distributed and resting on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now they were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men from every nation under heaven. And at the sound, the multitude came together and they were bewildered because each one heard them speaking in his own language. And they were amazed and wondered, saying, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each? And how is it that we hear each of us in his own native language? Parthians and Medes and Elamites and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabians. We hear them telling in our own tongues the mighty works of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord, send forth your spirit and renew the face of the earth. Lord, Lord send forth your spirit and renew the face of the earth. Bless the Lord, O my soul. O Lord, my God, how great you are. How many are your works, O Lord. The earth is full of your creatures. Lord, send forth your spirit and renew the face of the earth. You take away their breath, they die, returning to the dust from which they came. You send forth your spirit and they are created, and you renew the face of the earth. Lord, send forth your spirit and renew the face of the earth. May the glory of the Lord last forever. May the Lord rejoice in his works. May my thoughts be pleasing to him. I will rejoice in the Lord. Lord, send forth your spirit and renew the face of the earth. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Now there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are varieties of service, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of working, but it is the same God who inspires them all in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For by one spirit we were all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, 
and all were made to drink of one spirit. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Come, O Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful and enkindle in them the fire of your love. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. On the evening of that day, the first day of the week, the doors being shut where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, even so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Pentecost is one of the celebrations that I look forward to the most. It's not only a feast about what happened to the disciples after the ascension, but it's also a celebration of what happens to us when we open ourselves to the energy and the power of the Holy Spirit. Let's start by looking back at the experience of the early disciples, Peter, John, James, Thomas, and the others, and I'm sure some of the women too, like Mary of Magdala, were consoled by their encounters with Jesus after the resurrection, but they were still afraid to venture out or share their faith for fear of the possible consequences. You will remember that before he ascended, Jesus told them to wait in Jerusalem until they were clothed with the Holy Spirit. So they are waiting together for that gift that they had been promised with no real idea about what that meant. It is an important time in the Jewish calendar, the time of the Jewish festival of Shavuot, which marked the wheat festival, the wheat harvest, and was also the date that marked the giving of the Torah to Moses. As they gather, they experience something that is completely unexpected. They hear the roaring of wind and see the tongues of fire, an outward manifestation of the Holy Spirit. They experience something so interiorly powerful that they are transformed. Their fear is replaced by courage, conviction, and energy, and a clear sense of purpose. We haven't heard much before now of the disciples' abilities as linguists or preachers, but this new church is born out of this moment when the disciples receive the grace and power of the Spirit, which takes them beyond themselves. These disciples are now able to communicate with each person so that they can understand them in his or her own language. They are equipped and empowered by the Spirit to be able to do exactly what they need to do. The Spirit impels them to share their experience of Jesus. From this moment on, the church begins to spread quickly to all the surrounding areas as people catch the enthusiasm and conviction of the disciples. But Pentecost is not just a dramatic once-off moment that happened long ago, something to simply be remembered and commemorated. Pentecost is not over. The power of the Holy Spirit continues to manifest itself throughout the history of the church. We saw it in the rise of the early monastic communities in the first centuries after Jesus, in the spiritual deepening that happened in the 16th century at the time of St. Ignatius of Loyola, St. Teresa of Avila, and St. John of the Cross. We saw it in the many different women's religious communities that emerged in the 18th century to educate children, 
and to care for the sick. Some of you may be able to think back and remember Pope John XXIII's words at the start of the Second Vatican Council to throw open the windows of the church and to allow the fresh air of the Spirit to flow through. We've seen the power of the Holy Spirit too at critical moments in our country's history. Many of us experienced the energy of Pentecost on the day when all South Africans voted for the first time. Right now, as church, we are in a Pentecost time. On every continent, in parishes and communities, small groups of people have gathered to share their experience and to try to sense the Spirit's leading in the church as part of the Synod on Synodality. The Spirit is moving, and for the first time in the history of the church, men and women, ordained and lay, old and young, will vote at the Synod meeting in October. For the first time, those on the margins, refugees, the homeless, people who have been hurt by the church, those suffering from mental illness, are also included and made welcome in this journey. The Spirit is a force not easily contained. When things are stagnant and not life-giving, the Spirit tends to unsettle and disrupt. Once again, Pope Francis is inviting us as church to allow the Spirit to unsettle us and to show us where we need to grow. The Spirit doesn't only work in the church or the community, but also works within each one of us, equipping and empowering us for mission. Jesus promised not only his disciples, but each of us who seek to follow him, the presence of the Comforter, the Advocate, the Holy Spirit. In our second reading from Paul today, we are told that the Spirit works through our diversity and is given to each one of us in a unique and particular way. I'm awed by the way people I know bring clarity to inflammation through Excel spreadsheets, patiently teach small children, and create educational videos with high-tech equipment. As those of you who know me well will tell you, these are not my gifts. But when I use my gifts of listening to people in crisis, helping them in their relationship with God, I know I can sense the Spirit at work in me, using and amplifying my own efforts. So how can we discern the Spirit at work in our life? How do we sense Pentecost moments large and small and celebrate them? When we experience moments of reconciliation, repentance, courageous endurance of suffering, people working together to fight injustice, the love of a mother sitting with her baby in the neonatal ICU, an openness to welcoming the gifts of others, the determination to keep on trying in a situation where it would be easier to give up. These are everyday Pentecost moments. Pentecost times happen when we receive the Spirit and act in and through the power of that Spirit. The Spirit equips us far beyond our natural capacities when we ask for the grace that we need. At times when different people come together bringing their diverse gifts for a common purpose, the Spirit works especially powerfully. In the midst of the challenging circumstances in our country today, we need to live each day on the lookout for where the Holy Spirit might be at work. We also need to ask to be more open, to receive the power of the Holy Spirit that changes us and renews our hope and our energy. That energy of the Holy Spirit will equip us with capacity to do things we did not know we were capable of. As we discover in ourselves love, joy, peace, kindness, goodness, faithfulness and self-control, and a willingness to persevere, we can rejoice that the gift of Pentecost continues and that we are part of it. Let's join in praying together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the, the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and, and the glory are yours, now and, and forever. forever. Amen. Amen. Let's pray, friends. Lord, we give you thanks that we could encounter your word, that we could reflect upon your word. And help us now to deepen our reflections as we try to live out the invitation that you have for each one of us, and in so doing, become your faithful disciples. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with, with your, your spirit. spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you for joining us, and we hope to have you reflecting with us again next week.